everybody. As you can see here, we arrive a bit late because Dean sleeps late um, at uh, St. Lucia Main Beach and I think Margaret Pier officially moved to uh, St. Lucia Main Beach. There are a horde of anglers here on the beach um, with barely a space open to fish. So I think we might have to squeeze in, take the punch and just go with coming over and uh, try and get a bait out here see what we can do. Apparently there's been some honeys and uh, diamonds. What else, Dean? Honeys, diamonds in? Maybe a garlic in the day. But it looks like all these oaks are waiting for live bait, the odd shad coming out. I think I might opt throwing a bait for a honey or something. A spoon and uh, got a shad. I don't know if this one's gonna be sized to use as bait, but uh, yeah, they said yeah. So let's see if we're gonna wedge this one and then we'll put him out for a garrick or something like that. All right. And uh, this is nice. This is size. So nice size for live bait as well. Just on 30 about. Yep. The conventional live bait well <laughs> works very well. Okay guys, so uh, Andre is still jabbing away at the shad and uh, whilst it's gone a bit quiet, I've decided to put that live shad out. Uh, just making my trace. Uh, fishing a little bit heavier today because we couldn't bring all the tackle to the beach. But uh, got my Saltiga 50HA with my uh, Saltist 14 foot 2 heavy rod, the sliding rod. So I'm going to slide a live bait out. Got a non-return slide, a kingfish and non-return slide, and I've got a, a nino tuna circle, a silver tuna circle. So I'm going to show you how we're going to rig this shad up. Uh, very simple. Use two cable ties. I'm just going to cut the edge off one of them quickly, just to sharpen it a bit. Okay, then we're going to get our bait. My hook snoot on here, guys, is 0.77 uh, maxima. So, uh, not too heavy. Okay, so you're gonna take the first cable tie. You're gonna go just above the eye. You'll find a little cavity there. And guys, this is not painful to the shad at all. Uh, it comes out on that side, there we go. Close that cable tie. Put your second cable tie through that one. There. And you're going to take your hook, you're going to put it through the cable tie and tighten that up. So, guys, I use this to throw shad or to, uh, if I'm throwing a bait or even if I'm sliding a bait. Uh, what's good about it is that your hook stays nice and proud and uh, your bait stays alive much longer and the chances of something trying to steal that bait or pull or get the hook off the bait when you get a bite is very 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 minimal so this works for me very effective uh, also when you're casting a bait you, you know guys struggle to hook the bait and when they go to cast they actually throw the bait off so if you use this method you will probably never throw that bait off and uh, you get a good throw on a, on a live bait as well so we're going to get this bugger out uh, 
I put an eight-ounce sinker on just to get a little bit more distance. It's a nice water is filling up, so uh, should get a bite soon. Let's do this. With the grinder revolution, we hardly slide uh, often. So uh, I think today is a good opportunity to, uh, to put a slide out. The weather and the sea is good. Um, a little bit of a lip, yeah. I think what's important when you're fishing with live bait and fishing for garrick and, and other edibles is that uh, you either try and get your bait close to the back bank where the fish are coming and feed or you can't get it very close to the lip. But the garrick are not shy, they come very shallow and hunt off the edge of this, this short arm. So I'm not going to put this very far. I'm going to try and keep it close to the short arm because the shad are all hovering around the front chair. And obviously the garrick will come and try and look for the chair. Kingy will come past. I believe a cop came out yesterday, so chances are quite strong that we'll probably get a bite on the, on the live bait. Conditions are good today, so that sinker is going to sit straight away. Just going to get that bait and then we're going to hook it on and hook it on and slide it. bait just be a little bit more gentle and uh, slowly walk him over the lip there and then uh, after he gets just over this dump then you can start with a little bit more longer aggressive shakes okay guys that one's in uh, Seems like the shad have slowed down, so I think it's time to put a bait and try and fish with a bit of sod and see if we can get one or two live bait. Uh, I think Andre is gonna put a slide out now as well. Uh, and there's, there's been some flatfish around, so I think I'm also gonna look at throwing maybe a bonnie head or a chocker bait on the bank there, looking for that honeycomb. So, yeah, give it a bash. Okay, guys. Uh I gave Dean a live shad, obviously he gave me a dead shad and that's how it should be, you know, try and always do better. So I'm going to side a flap shad, or maybe not even flap it, just, uh, it is flapped, but just cut to uh, four little strips in the back for movement. Uh, probably won't uh, stand a chance for a garrick, but uh, might stand a chance for a cob. And there is still some shad around, I just want to get a bait out and then we'll spin a bit more for shad. Yamashita 210 ring soy on 49 strand 90 pound, just a little piece for some of these uh, smaller sharks swimming around here. And then 0.85 Maxima Ultra Green. Non return slide clip, I squash the, the sinker, especially over the banks here, so it doesn't wrap. And then I bend it, uh, you know, bend it straight here where it's normally bent, and then I bend it there in front of the rings. This is my bait. In fact, I'm going to use it just like this. Just flapped a, a bit of the fillet around the head. And then uh, put a hook, carrying hook in the front. And then a little extra one time at the back. And you've got a, a double deadly bait. Now guys, to make all of this perfect, lovely morning, St. Lucia, there's some fish around, uh, we've got some nice bait, to make everything perfect, simply do it. <laughs> I'm just securing my bottom hook with a toothpick through the eye there and I'm going to clip it, so that's nice and secure. Alright. Uh, I'm sliding on the 14 to 8, 14 to 3, Saltist. The seven to nine ounce. What's happening here? Maybe still some slack. And then I'm using that Maxima, the new Maxima Blue. This is a 0.58, uh, which I'm using. I'm going to slide on that. For sliding specifically, you want to use heavier line, 5.5 minimum. 
So it doesn't burn you off if a fish picks you up uh, in between. Still a good chance they'll burn you off depending on what fish it is. But you've got some time. It felt like there was something on my line. Just want to make sure. Feels okay, let's get this out. Sliding. In the beginning you just got to wiggle your tip so you can get that clip down to the water. As soon as it sucks over that lip with a wave lifting, then you make your strokes a bit longer. And as it goes further and further and further, you make even longer strokes to move that clip down. You want it all the way down to your sinker to prevent burning off. And uh, you want it on that leader line, ideally. So how long do you have to shake when, you, when you're sliding? As long as you can. It's never too long. But you can, uh, you can end up not shaking it enough. So rather, if you think you did it enough, do another 50 strokes. And uh, get that bait down, make sure. Okay guys, so we've got a bait out for Edible. Got that live bait out. Uh, Gonna throw a, throw a bait for the honey. Uh, they have been around, so <coughs> got my tournament heavy. Uh, sorry, tournament 15 foot heavy, and uh, paired that with the Saltus 8000. Got 40 pound J braid, standard full metal jacket, not very long. Uh, fishing for a flatfish, so it's fun. I uh, got a Tenno uh, tuna circle, so the one. And then uh, I think we're gonna put in a nice big red eye bomb with some chocker on the side, and then try and try and get it close to that bank at the back. Uh, hopefully, we get onto one of these flatfish. There has been a few diamonds around as well, so we'll just give it a bash. There we go. Nice bait. So red eye bomb, some movement. There's a little chocker base there. That's gonna throw a mile as well. So guys, when you're throwing. What's going to happen is your tentacles are going to be this way and it's going to be a little bit more aerodynamic uh, causing less resistance. Alright. Okay. Here we go. So the intention guys is, is for an inedible. But uh, if a kingy or a cop jumps on it, I'll be happy. Let's go catch a chef. Yeah. Let's go catch a chef. Let's get a five. Andre is throwing spoon. I decided to put a good old faithful shad trace with a red bunk. Uh, that's what the locals are using and they're quite successful. They got a few shad, more than us at school. So there's no shad in the wave now. So hope we get a bite. We get one or two more live baits. We can also throw a fresh shad out. Yeah. Let's try. It's almost like a switch. The mist just cleared up and the sun's out. So, one or two big sets coming through, but uh, looking good. We're trying to get, uh, you know, some a couple of shad. We got this morning early, tiny ones, put some live bait on. Uh, no luck yet. Hopefully, we'll get some soon. While it's quiet, there was one Garrick there down there now. We've got just the one live bait. I'm gonna look for a some more live bait in front here. It's uh, rigged up on the 11 foot I'm brought for spinning. Putting a steak fillet. Yeah, a bit of a steak fillet on you. Four ounce little ball sinker, 1 0. Uh, mustard tuna circle. And I'm fishing, this is 0.55 Maxima Ultra Green. Two little circle hooks. On one I'm going to put sardine, and on the other one I'm going to put a prawn. I want to try one of these. And can red prawns. These things are so full of uh, oil. This one, just a little fillet I'm going to put on. Sardine fillet. There's shad in the area as well, but any of this wave Gary can stuff will pick up the sardine. So I'm putting one hook with sardine and one hook with the prawn. And with these little, with the circle hooks, 
rig it like a normal hook on the back of the hook. And Linton finally, finally joined us four hours into the session. But that's Linton, then he arrives and he catches the fish. It's normal. Quick little bait like that. Let's clean this, still a bit frozen. That's what's nice about the safari, these foam, pieces of foam you get now. All your bait stays frozen in the bottom. And the ones you're busy using, you just put on top here. So when I come and rebait, it's ready there. This is a deadly pompano bait. A red prawn. things but fishing for smaller fish and scratching for live bait you do exactly that and you leave it mushy by the hook end and you just get better hookups doing that that's it let's go see if we can get a wave carry or something now where you want to target these fish is literally where the foam stops just a meter or so behind it, on that lip, where the wave lifts up like that, you put it into that wave. So it's just over this lip on the back there. You can slowly work it into the foam as well, especially for the wave Gary. But I'm looking for the, the bait fish that's sitting on that lip, because there might still be some shade around. It's a bit late in the morning already, but we'll have a, have a look see. Bait this, so we're gonna keep this on for bait. Got a little piece of sock. Uh, there you go. Lovely fish to catch on light tackle. Fun for the kids. Again. Our first morning at St. Lucia wasn't quite as productive as what we planned or hoped for. But there were a couple of live baits around and all we could do from our side was to make sure we've got live baits in the water as the garrick should be around and maybe a cob or two. And on the side we put some baits out for Pompano or any other possible game fish like kingies that might come and frequent these banks. It was all rounded off with a lovely stay at the new revamped Hippo Lodge at St. Lucia, offering a number of different self-catering units for families or just couples or singles, as well as their restaurant should you not want to walk too far to get a meal. Hippo Lodge also offers daily safaris into the big five game reserves as well as the Isi Mangalisa Reserve. River, hippo and crocodile trips is also available through Hippo Lodge. Up to now the fishing's been tough, but the lodge and our accommodation made up for the rest. 